Right, hello you lot, and we are out again with the Sonja Bates cameras, but unfortunately it's winter, it's horrible, and I can't catch any fish. So we thought, what a better time than to come out and film a nice little tippy video. So that is what we've came to do. We have came to Cudmore, which is a very, very nostalgic venue for us, and we are going to do as many as we can, pretty much, of my lovely winter sort of base bait tips that hopefully will get everyone a few bites during winter. So without further ado, here we go. Right, so my first tip, and it's gonna be me, me ever faithful for when it comes to winter. Pretty much skimmers and F1 fishing, but very much me silver fishy skimmer type fishing it's been this year. And that is the use of me crushed expander with the, the super crushed ground bait. It is, it's been me go-to for 20 years. You know what I mean, using crushed expanders to, to either sustain a peg by feeding the utter minimal amount of bait, but it puts a nice little smell, lots of attraction in the water. Off kicking off a peg. I mean, there's very, very few situations when I'm fishing, um, when I'm fishing pellets as a rule, that I won't feed ground bait with it in the winter. For whatever reason, it just makes the peg start faster, gets more fish in the peg. It just puts more attraction in your peg than micros on their own do. So for me, massive, massive edge is always feeding a tiny bit of crushing. In some kit, some circumstances, even feeding it on its own when it is absolutely rock bottom and you don't want to introduce any bait into your peg for me, crushed expander, massive, massive tip for the winter. I definitely wouldn't ever, ever be without it just for, for how it lets me do things. But the, the key thing for it for me is for understanding just how much of a tiny amount can make a difference to your peg. I mean, it's a very, very potent mix, very, very strong, obviously being 100% pellets, but it's amazing. The tiniest, tiniest little pinch that you won't believe. I'll show you in my cup in a second putting that in just to start your peg off it gets fish in there immediately because there's a bit more attraction in the water as opposed to plain pellets on their own so my next sip and this one without doubt carries on from the first of using the crushed expander for kicking things off and making pegs better in general and the next one is using tiny tiny micro pellets i mean these days the days of putting six and four mil pellets on in the winter for the venues i fish that are all f1 dominated and for skimmer fishing as well I never put four mil on. Literally, I never fish a four mil expander during the winter anymore, or very, very rarely anyway. For me, it's all about little baby two mils or even smaller. I mean, the tinier micro pellet you can get to match with my micro pellets, me, me normal feed pellets, the better. And the two mil pellets do a lovely job in staying nice and small as well. But the problem that you do have with many, many batches is that with all the pellets, they go very, what's the word, fully apart. -y. Not very professional, but yeah, th these for me stay lovely, stay solid, and allow me, because they're such a small pellet, you don't get as much grippage as you do with a four mil pellet. So I want a decent two mil that I can fish on a very, very light wire gauge hook, but still allow me to lift and drop, give it the big in, and my pellet's still gonna stay on. I'm not worried about it coming off. So for me, a two mil pellets, which in actual fact, when you swallow it up, it's probably a bit bigger. It's probably close to three mil. Far better suited to your, to your micro pellet -y, that style of fishing than a four mil. You know what I mean? I've said many, many times in the past, for me, a four mil pellet, while it could be phenomenal, it is the ultimate standout bait that the fish can avoid. So if I can get my expander to blend in with my micros, that's always gonna be the first tip for me. So yes, swapping to a two mil pellet instead of a four mil, without doubt, my number one hook bait tip for pellet fishing in the winter. Right, so next up on the tip list, and for this one, I'm gonna to refer to a brand new product that we've only just brought out, and that is our one milli feed pellets, which still very much in the infancy in terms of what I'm using them for, but they're definitely this winter, they're already finding a place for a bit of negative skimmer fishing, but also for me method feeder fishing, just because it's something different. I mean, same sort of makeup as a micro pellet, no different, just nice and little. And if anything, just something the fish haven't seen before, which I mean, I'm big about that. These days when fish are the pressured more than they've ever been before, since COVID came about, the amount of people fishing is ridiculous. And I think doing things that stand out from the norm definitely are paying a big dividend, sort of. You're catching plenty of fish by doing things different to everyone else. And that's what this is all about for me. I mean, using a nice small pellet that 
potentially gives them a bit less feed, although you are feeding more pellets. But say the biggest thing for me, it is just something different that breaks down in a beautiful slow way that them little buggers in the lake haven't seen too many times before. So yeah, for me, one mil pellets on a mefa feeder, definitely a must try this winter. Right, next tip, and this one I'm gonna go, it's a little bit different event that I'm going with sight, sight attraction and drawing fish into my bait with the minimal amount of feed sort of thing and using a couple of products, which in this case is gonna be the fluoro rocks or the liquid haze we produce as well. And the way I'd like to use them both is if I'm honest, probably most of the time when my feed are fishing, but also I'd, I'll stick a few rocks in, maybe a bit of ground bait for silverfish, but that's, that's a little jakey tip. But for me, feed are fishing, definitely, because you're, you're creating needle in an haystack, pretty much, you've put in a tiny little pile of bait into an area, you want maximum amount of attraction, and in clear water, when visibility is a big thing, when them fish are gonna see it from a distance away and uh, come into your feed, I think having a bit of a visual stimulation, a, a focus point, if anything, can be a massive, massive big thing. A little bit of an eye catcher that catches that big wobbly carp as it's swimming past your bait that if it was a bit subtle and dull, maybe you wouldn't have caught it. So for me, it's definitely worth trying as a, another string to your bow sort of thing, is adding products like this, either your fluoro rocks in with your micros to give it a, what do we have, a bit of a glow, you know what I mean, homing in point on the micros, or using a, a, a liquid substance over the top that's gonna create a cloud in and around your feeder when a fish is close to it or as it breaks down slowly itself. Using them two products as a, a homing beacon, definitely worthwhile on them tricky days when you just need that extra little bite when the water's really, really clear. So still on the winter tip subject, and this one, I've got a nice, lovely smelling one for you. And that's gonna be using your, your attractants and your flavors during the winter, for me in maybe in all conditions, but mostly colored water. I think again, very similar to a tip I did on the, the sight sort of thing, the sight element of dragging fish in with minimal bait, but very visual baits. The scent sort of thing, definitely for me. What type of scent you have, all up to yourself. I mean, the lotions and potions that we like to use are all, we've talked about it a lot, confidence boosters, if anything else. But definitely the way I've come to see additives and flavors myself over the years is that's what you need to use them as. I don't believe that fish love a certain flavor. Yeah, I believe we like a flavor more than the fish do. But what I definitely think it does do is make your bait stand out. Of course, we've said that lots and lots of times, but again, leading onto the winter when the fish are really, really hard to, to get them onto your bait, it's just that, that attraction thing that it grabs their attention. I mean, a bit of scent in the water, the odd little hungry one like me might go down and have a little root, try and find it and get you that bite where you wouldn't have got that bite potentially with plain old boring bait that they've seen a million times before. Like I say, well worth a try on them tricky days when you can't catch anything. Next up on the winter tip list is not a winter tip at all, if anything, and I'm going to go a bit producty and talk about something very, very that seems insignificant, if anything, but makes a massive difference because it looks after my bait and that is imperative, if anything. And that is a nice breathable uh, bucket cover. Yeah, I've had lots of bucket covers in the past that the solid plastic types that you put over and you end up with no air in the bucket, which is no good for things like maggots and any live baits you want to keep in that bucket because they go a bit dead. So I don't want any of that. I want a breathable bucket cover that looks after my bait. I mean, I have several of these that I keep either my maggots in, that stop me maggots from either sweating and getting nasty in the sun or getting wet when it's raining. And then of course, for me ground bait and me pellets, which are in this case, I can chuck them in there either on the wet days to protect them or mostly for me on the, the sunny days to stop them drying out, stop them going a bit nasty. It just looks after your bait. Do you know what I mean? Really little tiny thing that you don't even notice makes a difference, but it does. You've got good bait all day long and you're not worrying about your bait dying, drying out, going nasty, not doing what you want it to do because you haven't got something that looks after it without you putting any effort in. So yes, little tiny tip for all year, not just the winter one, this one is use a bucket cover for whenever I've got me bait in it. So another little winter tip that, again, it's not very wintry. <laughs> this is something for pretty much all seasons, definitely worth trying. And it's something that I've learned myself while practicing for the underground super cup final this year so going up to woodlands thirsk and it became very very apparent that up there they do things a little bit differently when it comes to meth feeder fishing and that is using bigger pellets i mean it's something that's not done very often up and down the country but using fours and in many cases even six mil softened coarse pellets it, it was a massive edge i mean again so similar to many of the other tips it's standing out doing something different 
I mean, it's something that these fish haven't seen before, they've not been pressured on, and it just catches a few fish because it's, it's relatively new and ultimately a little bit safe to them. So definitely something that's worth playing with. It's doable with both our F1 feed pellets and the Pro feed pellet range. Both I've done it, in this case, I've done some fours and some sixes. Really, really simple to do. Just literally soak your pellets the morning before even, but ideally the night before, soak them for five minutes, take that water off, chuck them in the fridge, you are good to go in the morning. All I will recommend is that often they need a little bit of a spray at various intervals throughout the match just to keep them a little bit tacky, but it's really, really easy with those batches of pellets to create a pellet that you can put on a method feeder, on a pellet feeder, whatever other type of feeder you want, to create a lovely pile of bigger pellets that is so different to the standard lump of micros that them fish are very, very used to seeing. Right, we are still on the subject of baity tips. And for today, yeah, yet again, I'm not going on a winter one. I'm going on a, a standard tip that I might use at any time of year when fishing for smaller fish, again, on a method feeder. And that is focusing on hook baits with the method feeder. And what are we going to call them? I'm going to call it accidental hook baits because it, it's a big thing for me. I've spoke about it a million times in the past that I believe a lot of the time, and especially during winter, fish come onto your pile of whatever you've got on a meth feeder, whether it's ground bait, little pellets, whatever, they want to eat them. They often don't want to have what you've got on, what you have on the hook bait, on your hook. They might want to try and avoid that piece of corn, that wafter, whatever else, just because it's a bit too lively at this time of year. There's no competition. It's that one fish over your pile. You need to get it to take in your bait, for me, by accident. And I believe that's a big thing in meth feeder fishing. I mean, we've spoke about it loads loading your feeder in the right way, just making sure the fish eat the pile and your hook bait goes in the mouth by accident. Massive, massive big thing. And this is where this bait comes into it. I mean, definitely not something I can take credit for this one. This has come from the method feeder master that is Andy Finley. Over the years, he's been a big advocate of using uh, little expander pellets, which is what I'm gonna talk about as hook bait for a long, long time. And for me, definitely an important part of my fishing as well, mainly for little fish fishing. I mean, for skimmers, for F1s, maybe some little carp in the winter, mainly with micro pellets, if I'm honest, that's probably me go-to. But having a lovely buoyant pellet, or neutrally buoyant, one that pops up really, really quickly because it's so light and fluffy, as opposed to a heavy feed pellet. I mean, it's the perfect hook bait for me when them fish, you just want to be a bit more selective. I mean, you don't want to put a maggot on that could potentially get nailed by a little perch or a gudgeon or something. A bit more selective, but still has that accidental properties in going in the fish's mouth nice and easy and catching them fish that pretty much didn't want to eat your bait in the first place so yes well worth a try on them tricky days when you want to catch them fish that are a little bit moody so back on the tips and still i'm going to go something that was in the summer sim summary type of tip that i can bring into me winter fishing and something that we actually did a video on my first video force on your bait and that is talking about the pro expanders in the eight mils and this time of year, it's just a standout winter hook bait. I mean, just as you'd fish bomb and corn, bomb and bread, it's a nice, big, minimal feed sort of hook bait that stands out massively on, on the bottom that they'll easily pick up. I mean, it's a massive big thing in the winter. It fulfills the, the sight element sort of thing and fish finding your hook bait while creating a lovely big hook bait that really won't fill them up too much. They'll be happy to eat. And yeah. I mean, not a lot to this tip. Nice, simple one. Well, we're trying a big, lovely, swollen up expander that you can dick about with, make a couple of different colours, put flavours on them, whatever you want to do, but ultimately creates a phenomenal hook bait for when winter bombing, whatever, bombing single hook bait fishing. <laughs> <laughs>